Thank you for joining us today at Afro Global Conversations. Today, we seek to discuss a topic on the future of multilateralism, which is facing a lot of challenges and threats. Today, I'm joined by Chris Kasema, our contributor at the Afro Global Conversations, as always. Thank you very much, Mr. Good. It is always a pleasure. Thank you. So today, we are discussing about the threats that we have towards future multilateralism in the world politics. So we have seen the US moving towards unilateralism. We have seen uh, the UK through Brexit. We have seen a lot of uh, um, economic nationalism in Africa with the failure of having a, a, a compact trade uh, region or a regional trade uh, agreement that uh, will push us towards uh, multilateralism in the international system. But before we go there, what are some of the push factors that you see that will, uh, will influence the future of multilateralism? Uh, before I respond to your question, Mr. Ogoti, uh, I would like to, meant, uh, to make a very um, a quick reference to Tanzania, sure. which is also one of those countries that uh, is pushing back from our globalization. Uh, but now going straight to your question, I think there are many factors that are influencing the pushback factors that we experience right now in terms of multilateralism and actually in advance of uh, globalization. Um, and some of these factors is, uh, I think I'll make reference to a book that was written by Kendall Watts uh, about levels of analysis and he says, uh, for you to be able to understand the nature of a state, you need to understand the character of the people who, who run that state. Sure. And uh, taking an example of uh, Tanzania, uh, Magufuli seems to be a populist in his approach, especially to the response of COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, he has taken um, a very populist approach. He has risked the lives of the people, who, uh, people of his country. Um, I, mean, I hear people are still dying. Uh, there's still the spread of coronavirus, but he has decided not to uh, take measures that are uh, 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 will be um, in joint effort with other countries like Kenya, which is taking a very proactive role in fighting pandemic, and other mm -hmm. countries like Uganda. Uh, but going back to the global stage, if you look at Trump again, is another question of leadership, uh, because uh, before Trump we had Obama, who was a Democrat, and Democrats are always uh, they are always glob uh, globalist in their approach to uh, issues, especially in their foreign policy. So what we experience is a crisis of leadership uh, from uh, world leaders and some leaders in some uh, certain regions. Uh, there are those who are uh, resorting to nationalism because nationalism sells more uh, in politics than uh, globalists. Uh, globalists they are the people who advance the uh, agendas of the of the of the global uh, good, uh, the interests of the go uh, of, of the people at large. And, 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 and the challenges that we're experiencing in Britain is because of leadership. If you look at the people that we have in the, the, in the government in British, their people are populist. If you go to the US, so America first, they are populist. Cut you short, you have, uh, you have referenced some various and, uh, leaders and you have deeply uh, centered the future of multilateralism around our leadership in international relations. So do you see Trump as a threat to future multilateralism? And do you see... Are you borrowing Kevin Rudd's, uh, Rudd's uh, uh, analogy that uh, for, for multilateralism to exist and to, to be strengthened, we need a Democrat at the, highs, uh, at the White House? Uh, I, I tend to agree uh, for sure because I think Trump, not just to me, but I think to many people, even the Americans themselves, Trump has posed himself as a threat. Uh, to globalization and to multilateralism. Uh, from uh, his campaign in uh, 2016, he has always chanted that he wants to approach things from a bilateral point of view. He does not want to engage in a, in a multilateral because he thinks that uh, foreign policy should be a zero-sum game where America gains 100%. Now going back uh, to, uh, to, uh, to other issues, Trump uh, has threatened to withdraw funding to WHO at a time when we were faced by a pandemic. Now that one is, is an issue of again leadership. Go again to the issue of Trump threatening to not fund NATO again. That's an issue of leadership. And what happens is if the powerful state, the most powerful, the most capable state in any regional uh, agenda or any multilateral engagement is not willing to support the engagements, then that you can consider those arrangements as dead, okay. uh, basically. So uh, you have spoken of uh, WHO, NATO, so this shifts to, towards global governance and the role of uh, the international and governmental and government organizations like the UN. Yes. What do you think are the role of these uh, organizations in safeguarding uh, the future of multilateralism? Because uh, the world right now, uh, with the challenges that we are facing, look at the COVID-19, which 
uh, which, which requires global cooperation. We have uh, transnational issues like uh, climate change, terrorism, and uh, so forth. So even uh, economic, political, and social organizations per se. So what, what do you see are the roles of these uh, organizations safeguarding the future of multilateralism? Now, these organizations are very important, and I can tell you for sure and for a fact that uh, there is no going back. Uh, the places that we've gotten, we can only go forward. Uh, Britain can leave the EU, but EU will still remain to be very fundamental and very instrumental uh, in addressing the challenges of, uh, of the people of Europe and uh, uh, the global at large. Uh, at the same time, uh, people, countries will join international organizations for certain gains. And if those gains are not guaranteed, definitely they would not see any importance for them to be part of that. And, and, and what you are saying is that if a country wants to be a member of the United Nations because they know they are going to benefit out of that, because problems that we experience right now, there's problems that go beyond a, a state's border. You cannot, uh, what Corona has told us right now is that uh, uh, we, it does not recognize borders. You can close your borders, but you still come and find you where you are. But now that we experience these kind of challenges, we need to change our approach, and these problems can only be addressed through a multilateral approach. For instance, we need to, right now, uh, at the time, we need to engage in uh, issues of uh, uh, health corporations, international health corporations. We sure. need to have uh, uh, countries more committed to supporting international health systems mm -hmm. that will at least lead to us fighting this pandemic in, in, in the best way possible. Okay, so in conclusion, um, we see in one uh, end in the international politics, we are seeing China advocating for a shared destiny for humanity where it is uh, based on multilateralism. And then we are seeing the US, which is considered as the power, the superpower of the current regime, the world uh, order, uh, pushing for un unilateralism through Trump's foreign policy. So do you see these... Um, this uh, debacle between multilateralism and bilateralism for one end is going to affect how these two states will relate. Definitely, definitely a lot in, in, and in many ways. And, uh, and I want to quote uh, Kishore Mahubani. And he says that uh, what we experience right now is, uh, is, is, is leadership of that process of globalization that is moving from the U.S. and going to the Chinese. Uh, basically because of the way that China has responded to the pandemic and the way that the U.S. has not been able to respond effectively to the pandemic, even being one of the most powerful states. And again, the point where we're going, I, 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 I think the point where we're going in life is that uh, we are experiencing, we are, not, we are no longer in the 1990s where U.S. was the only guaranteed uh, uh, superpower. Right now we have China coming up. We have countries that have responded better in COVID-19, like Singapore like South Korea, and other countries are coming up. It, uh, Russia is still there. Russia is still there. Germany is still coming up, and the EU is still coming up. So depending on which country will raise up to the occasion and take up this leadership of the wave of globalization, uh, then I think uh, multilateralism will still be there. And I want to make another point reference back home. Even when you're battling with this challenge of COVID-19, when countries are taking uh, measures uh, that are nationalistic in, uh, in, 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 their, in, the, in their response, sure. uh, we find other countries that are still more cooperating. That's why Kenya still went out and battled for the United Nations uh, non permanent member. Uh, that's why we have the launch of the Mano River Union in the mm -hmm. West African region. That's why still we have the launch of the Grand Inga Dam. That's why still people are still hoping and expecting that the uh, African continental fleet area will still be launched at at a certain date. So the materialism would still, 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 still not end. Trump might believe that materialism is the best way to approach it, but as we, we progress, I think things will change and uh, materialism will, will still prosper. Okay, thank you for your submissions and discussions. Mm -hmm. And we have heard the future of multilateralism will be deeply uh, influenced by globalization, the leadership that we have in various states, and also how uh, the, the international organizations that we have uh, govern the global arena and the various issues that we have. Thank you for joining us and remember to subscribe and join the conversation. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.